Okay, so clock again. Three, two, one. That was rubbish. Three, two, one. That was even more rubbish. Three, two, one. That was better. Okay, so I went to EGX Res this April with my college. And these are a few things that I kind of got from it. Okay. So the first day we got there, all very tired. We woke up at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So all very tired once we got there because it took about five, six hours. So I'm sorry if it was a bit, it's a bit skewed kind of thing. Some information's wrong or whatever, you know. Please forgive me. So today I'm gonna talk about the games that we played. So on the Thursday, we were very tired. We woke, we've all woken up about three, four, five a.m. to get there. It takes about five hours, six hours. So we got there while it was about middle of the event. So we were very tired. So this is what I'm trying to remember. I'm still a bit hmm on it, but we should be fine. So the first day, while well, me and my friends scoped out, we met up with some other friends and we played a game called I can't remember the name of it. But it was a really good, cutesy, cartoony shooter game. So it was like four players, and there was like zombies and stuff. Like you become a zombie, you are a zombie, like your figure, and you have to shoot each other. It reminded me of like Move or Die or something, or like Tower 4 Ascension. You know, like four people, and you know. So it's like the Tower 4 Ascension shooting mechanics, but it also looks like Move or Die. So that was the first one. We then, so my friend all played a VR game and it was called, let me check what it's called, A Ton of Feathers. It was a very weird game and I'm sorry because the person who was there, like manning the stand, was actually the creator so I'm sorry if we offend you anyway. Hopefully not, hopefully we're like wow this, this is weird and then you know, but yeah, the game, interesting, shall I say, apparently it's meant to be how developers feel, like game developers, and how like they want to be a developer, but like, as a, someone who just looked at it and like saw the surroundings, it was basically just a teddy bear VR, like a teddy bear, like tin foil everywhere, we were like, what is going on here? It's like, over there's some tin foil, right? I'll get it for you. It's just this everywhere. I I was so confused. I was like, why? Why, why is there tin foil everywhere? <laughs> you know. And uh, uh, my uh, my friend played it, and he was like, "This is weird. This is really really weird." He didn't know if he liked it. He was like, "I'm on a bad trip, man." <laughs> you know. So I'm sorry. Like that was a game I remember quite vividly because I was thinking, "What is going on here?" Yeah, so then we walked around a bit more, and my friend even went on a Guild Wars 3, I think it might be 2, it might be a new 2 thing, uh, like Beast, like Mythical Beast, which I'll put a picture up now, and that was really cool, I, we, um, we just looked on at them. I then, uh, t-shirt wise, I didn't have a t-shirt for the next day, so I've got a t-shirt from the £5 Insert Coin Mystery Bundle, and I got the one that was in my last video, which I'll put up now. I also got this cool snazzy PlayStation reversible jacket. So you know, this is the back. But then it also is grey on the inside. So I got that really cheap, so thank you Insert Coin for having really cool clothes and you know, if you want to sponsor me you can, you know? You never know. So anyway, we then went around more and my two of my friends played Disobedient Sheep, which basically you have a controller, you use both your sticks to like move around and you just like move two different dogs around and you have to make sure the sheep don't get squished by like bombs and anvils and everything and I quite like that, I was a big fan of that because I, some may say I'm the indie master, some people in my class because I'm the only one who likes indie games really, but yeah. Uh, I really liked it, I liked the aesthetic of it, it was very pleasing, they both loved it, they both want to like buy it now because they loved it that much, so yeah, it was a really good game, and I would probably buy it as well because I do like an indie game, and I like a multiplayer game, you know, 
play it with my friends, you know, play it with my family. It's all good. Uh, then we went to into this one bit and they had a game there, which they wouldn't stop playing for the whole time, called Anno 1800 or 1800. <sighs> we spent most of our time there. Like, they keep going, I love that game. I love that. When I asked them, like, oh, can you help me write a script about it? They were like, I just loved it. Grow potatoes. So basically, it's like a strategy game, like Civ, whatever, or Civ, or E4, or, you know, like, why, uh, CK2. Games like that, but you could, like, it's a live, uh, real life action kind of thing. So it's like doing it in real time. So like people like grow potatoes and stuff and like people go have fairs all of a sudden you're like wow this is really interesting. It's not my particular type of game but I know people who would love it. Even if they said they wouldn't, they would love it. So yeah that's that was another game we played. So the next day we got there all a bit disgruntled because stuff happened. Uh, and I was wanted to meet Eurogamer unfortunately I was a bit too late and I was like, that's fine. I was like, you know, I was a bit upset, but I was like, that's fine. I was gonna get them to like give me advice. It's fine. But then we went I we went, we went to get a Coke and I actually met PlayStation Access, which I was so thankful for. They've given me some great advice. If you ever, you know, PlayStation Access, if you ever wanna hire me, you know, call me, DM me, you know. My DMs are always open for you guys. So we played we uh, talked to them and they gave me some good advice. Uh, you know, there's a picture of me with them. It's me with blue hair. So yeah, that's quite good. So, we then talked to Eurogamer, the journalist side. We had a talk, I had a talk there. I listened to a talk and that was really useful. There's some really nice things they said, like stand out and stuff, which you wouldn't, so which was very interesting to me, even though one of the most charismatic people when it came to talking. It was still, you know, good, fun. You know, lovely entertainment. <laughs> you know, wasted a good hour. All good. We then, like, shopped around a lot. Uh, not many games were played on the second game, I don't think. I just bought a load of stuff. And my birthday was then, so I got a load of stuff. Yeah. Uh, but then, we saw Dreams. And Dreams is my big one. So let me get my notes for Dreams. One sec. So, what we saw of it, my friend played it while I wrote stuff down. So what we saw was a load of different uh, mini games that were made. So one was called like motion controls, dream verse drafts, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm just gonna go through all these, what my notes were, and then I'll tell you about the actual big thing about dreams. So one was called motion controls, where you start as a red square chasing cones off a cliff, but and he just keeps saying like, "Please hug me, please hug me," but no one hugs him, which I found really sad. And the person playing it was also like, "Oh, it's just really sad." And I'm like, "Yeah, it's PlayStation." <laughs> uh, there was Dream vs Dash, a Ninja Warrior s game, get the fastest time running through an obstacle course. And then there was a we we found a little glitch when they run through the boxes, which is, you know, is, if someone made that, you can imagine why. Uh, Wildfire, which is a 16-bit Mario type game. Bug Report, which is a, a third-person shooter. Apparently the controls are simple, yet hard to go through because dark. Yeah, I remember that one. Basically everything was dark, and we were like, great trying to go through and it was just too dark and we couldn't navigate it so we just skipped that one. Curiosity, so it's a robot in an apocalypse type world. Not not sure what it is. So basically it reminded me of like the start of a game where it was like, we need to go, you know, the apocalypse is happening and then it was like, thank you for playing this game. We're like, cool, okay then. No, that's the wrong one, no. Uh, yeah, so apparently it's a robot apocalypse type world, not sure what it is. Probably don't know what it is. Uh, Yvonne in the basement, a shy bird estate agent battles with a for sale sign who 
Inspects with left trigger, fight robots on wheels, looks emo. Yeah, I don't know what half notes mean. I do remember the shy bird and that looked look really good. As I said before, I quite like indie games. So it just looks quite indie. It's like, oh, this is nice and feely and makes me feel better kind of thing, you know? It's okay. Uh, Vector Maj Majoris? Majoris? So it was, basi it was basically Star Fox. Just a plane going around on my Star Fox. Uh, Panis Pot. So it was basically a kid talking and you're a pee and like so you had to get into the pot so it was a kid's voice and it's the um, his imagination of the pee so it's got like weird fire and like colors and did remind me of like iron bread you know like the aesthetic and everything of it uh ferrovium it's a ship shooting side scroller which again a bit like star fox really uh so the encounter was what i was talking about before so basically you had a little friend like crap saying we got to go to the space station you know and a lot of the text and voices were overlapping it was a bit slow paced however you can't get as done after the demo so everyone was like oh cool this looks quite good it reminded me of like it reminded me of like borderlands claptrap also reminded me of like portal or something or like half-life yeah it's not valve don't worry um so polar polarity a little cube that collects sparks and goes red when crouching, goes blue when jumps. Intense music. Red and blue are magnets, so it repels and attracts. Yeah, so I remember that. So basically, you're a cube and you go up to like, you attract to like blue if you're on the blue side. If you're red, you repel from it. So it's like a platformer. So that was my notes from it. However, the big thing about Dreams is that it's like Construct, it's like 3DS Max, and it's like audio all at once it's just you can make your own games and I really like this idea as someone who's in a game design class that's just really good I can now use that to make my games rather than using all of them free programs I just make it there and it looks really good we saw a demo of it and I just I couldn't believe it it's really good uh yeah I think that's it from what I remember from EGX other than dreams I'm gonna put in a club uh, but yeah I hope you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe uh, on Instagram and Twitter, follow me at li3l60h and I hopefully see you guys in the next video, bye!
two, one. That was more rush. Three, two, one. That was even more rush. Three, two, one. That was better. Okay, so I went to EGX from Res this April with my college. And these are a few things that I kind of got from it. Okay. So the first day we got there, all very tired. We woke up at like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. So all very tired once we got there because it took about five, six hours. So I'm sorry if it was a bit, it's a bit skewed kind of thing. Some information's wrong or whatever, you know. Please forgive me. So today, not today. So on Thursday, we got to the event. And so while me and a few of my friends were like scoping out, some of my friends were playing some games. Once we got back to see them, we started playing this game and it was called Guntastic, I believe. Let me check my notes. Uh, I believe it was Guntastic. Yes, it is. So, let me cut that again. Okay. Um, so, this April, I went to EG Express. And this is what I learned. This is what. The the. Why can I do this? Right. So this April, I went to EGX Rest, and this is what I played and what my friends played. So, I know this is about a month late, but I've just got my YouTube channel, and you know what I mean, like you know, complicated. <laughs> like I've just you know I'm not doing well. Uh, let me do it again. God sake. What's the time? Okay, we'll see what happens. We good. Okay, so. Oh. So, I went to EGX Res this April. And this is what me and my friends played. I'm sorry, it's about a month late. I know, I know, I know. I know you You know, people can be like, EGX Res has been ages away. Why didn't you do a video till now? Just set this thing up. Please, like, I did it after EG Express. Please, you know, give me a chance, please. So, today, I'm going to talk about the games that we played. So on the Thursday, we were very tired. We woke, we've all woke up about 3, 4, 5 a.m. to get there. It takes about five hours, six hours, so we got there when it was about middle of the event. So we're very tired. So this is what I'm trying to remember. I'm still a bit hmm on it, but we should be fine. So the first day, while well, me and my friends scoped out, we met up with some other friends and we played a game called, I can't remember the name of it, but it was a really good, cutesy, cartoony shooting game. So it was like four players and there was like zombies and stuff. Like you become a zombie, you are a zombie, like your figure, and you have to shoot each other. It reminded me of like Move or Die or something, or like Tower Four Ascension. You know, like four people, and you know. So it's like the Tower Four Ascension shooting mechanics, but it also looks like Move or Die. So that was the first one. We then, so my friend all played a VR game, and it was called, let me check what it's called, a ton. Of feathers. It was a very weird game, and I'm sorry because the person who was there, like manning the stand, was actually the creator. So I'm sorry if we offend you anyway. Hopefully not. Hopefully we're like, wow, this this is weird, and then you know. But yeah, the game interesting. Should I say? Apparently, it's meant to be how developers feel, like game developers, and how like they want to be a developer. But like, as a, for someone who just looked at it and like saw the surroundings, it was basically just a teddy bear VR, like a teddy bear, like tin foil everywhere. And we were like, what is going on here? It's like over there, some tin foil, right? I'll get it for you. It's just this everywhere. I I was so confused. I was like, why? Why is there tinfoil everywhere? <laughs> you know, and uh, my, uh, my friend played it and he was like, this is weird. This is really, really weird. He didn't know if he liked it. He was like, I'm on a bad trip, man, <laughs> you know? So I'm sort of like, that was a game I remember quite vividly because I was thinking, what is going on here? 
yeah, so then we walked around a bit more, and my friend even went on a Guild Wars 3, I think, it might be 2, it might be a new 2 thing, uh, like Beast, like Mythical Beast, which I'll put a picture up now, and that was really cool, I, we, um, we just looked on at them, I then, uh, t-shirt wise, I didn't have a t-shirt the next day, so I've got a t-shirt from the £5 Insert Coin Mystery Bundle, and I got the one that was in my last video, which I'll put up now. I also got this cool snazzy PlayStation reversible jacket. So you know, this is the back. But then it also is grey on the inside. So I got that, really cheap, so thank you Insert Coin for having really cool clothes and you know, if you want to sponsor me you can, you know, you never know. So anyway, we then went around more and my two of my friends played Disobedient Sheep, which is basically you're having a controller, you use both your sticks to like move around and to like move two different dogs around and you have to make sure the sheep don't get squished by like bombs and animals and everything and I quite like that I was a big fan of that because I some may say I'm the indie master some people in my class because I'm the only one who likes indie games really but yeah uh, I really liked it, I liked the aesthetic of it, it was very pleasing, they both loved it, they both want to like buy it now because they loved it that much, so yeah, it was a really good game, and I would probably buy it as well because I do like an indie game, and I like a multiplayer game, you know, I play it with my friends, you know, play it with my family, it's all good. Uh, then we went into this one bit, and they had a game there, which they wouldn't stop playing for the whole time, called Anno 1800 or 1800. We spent most of our time there. Like, they keep going, I love that game. I love that. When I asked them, like, oh, can you help me write a script about it? They were like, I just loved it. Grow potatoes. So basically, it's like a strategy game, like Civ, whatever, or Civ, or E4, or, you know, like, why? Uh, CK2, games like that, but you could like, it's a live, uh, real life action kind of thing, so it's like doing it in real time, so like people like grow potatoes and stuff, and like people go have fairs all of a sudden, you're like, wow, this is really interesting. It's not my particular type of game, but I know people who would love it, even if they said they wouldn't, they would love it. So yeah, that's, that was another game we played. So the next day, we got there, all a bit disgruntled, because stuff happened, uh, and I was wanted to meet Eurogamer, unfortunately I was a bit too late, and I was like, oh, that's fine, I was like, you know, I was a bit upset, but I was like, that's fine, I was going to get them to like give me advice, it's fine, but then we went, I, we, we went to get a Coke, and I actually met PlayStation Access, which I was so thankful for, they've given me some great advice, if you ever, you know, PlayStation Access, if you ever want to hire me, you know, call me, DM me, you know, my DMs are always open for you guys. So, we played, we uh, talked to them, and they gave me some good advice. Uh, here, you know, there's a picture of me with them, me with blue hair, I sh so yeah, that's quite good. So, we then talked to Eurogamer, the journalist side, we had a talk, I had a talk there. I listened to a talk and that was really useful. There's some really nice things they said, like stand out and stuff, which you wouldn't, so which was very interesting to me, even though one of the most charismatic people when it came to talking. It was still, you know, good, fun, you know, lovely entertainment, <laughs> you know, wasted a good hour, all good. We then, like, shopped around a lot. Uh, not many games were played on the second game, I don't think. I just bought a load of stuff. And my birthday was then, so I got a load of stuff. Yeah, uh, but then we saw Dreams, and Dreams is my big one. So let me get my notes for Dreams, one sec. I have a very apple puff book. People got PlayStation access to autographs and stuff. So, what we saw of it, my friend played it while I wrote stuff down. So what we saw was a load of different uh, 
mini games that were made. So one was called like motion controls, freedom verse drafts, you know, that kind of thing. So I'm just going to go through all these, what my notes were, and then I'll tell you about the actual big thing about dreams. So one was called motion controls, where you start as a red square chasing cones off a cliff, but and he just keeps saying like, please hug me, please hug me, but no one hugs him, which I found really sad. And the person playing it was also like, oh, it's such a really sad. I'm like, yeah. It's PlayStation. <laughs> uh, there was Dream vs. Dash, a Ninja Warrior-esque game. Get the fastest time running through an obstacle course. And then there was a, we, we found a little glitch when they run through the boxes, which is, you know, it's, if someone made that, you can imagine why. Uh, Wildfire, which is a 16-bit Mario type game. Bug Report, which is a uh, third-person shooter. Apparently the controls are simple, yet hard to go through because dark. Yeah, I remember that one. Basically, everything was dark, and we were like, great. Trying to go through, and it was just too dark, and we couldn't navigate it, so we skipped that one. Curiosity, so it's a robot in an apocalypse-type world. Not, not sure what it is. So basically, it reminded me of like the start of a game where it was like, we need to go, you know, the apocalypse is happening, and then it was like, thank you for playing this game, we're like, cool. Okay then. No, that's the wrong one. No! Uh, yeah, so apparently it's a very rock apocalypse type world, not sure what it is. Probably don't know what it is. Uh, Yvonne in the basement, a shy bird estate agent battles with a for sale sign who inspects with left trigger, fight robots on wheels, looks emo. Yeah, I don't know what half the notes mean. I do remember the shy bird and that looked really good. As I said before, I quite like indie games. So it just looks quite indie, it's like, oh, this is nice and feely, it makes me feel better kind of thing, you know? It's okay. Uh, Vector Majoris? Majoris? So it was basically, basically Star Fox. Just a plane going around on my Star Fox. Uh, Palace Pot, so it was basically a kid talking and you were a pea. And like, so you had to get into the pot. So it was a kid's voice. And it's the, um, his imagination of the piece, so it's got like weird fire and like colours and did mind me of like iron bread, you know, like the aesthetic and everything of it. Uh, Ferrovium, it's a ship shooting side scroller, which again, a bit like Star Fox really. Uh, so the encounter was what I was talking about before, so basically you had a little friend like crap, crap saying, we got to go to the space station, you know, and a lot of the text and voices were overlapping. It was a bit slow paced, however, you can't get as done after the demo, so everyone was like, oh, cool, this looks quite good. It reminded me of like, it reminded me of like Borderlands, clap trap. Also reminded me of like, Portal or something, or like Half-Life. Yeah, it's not Valve, don't worry. Um, so Polari Polarity, a little cube that collects sparks and goes red when crouching, goes blue when jumps, intense music, red and blue are magnets, so it repels and attracts. Yeah, so I remember that. So basically, you're a cube and you go up to like, you attract to like blue if you're on the blue side. If you're red, you repel from it. So it's like a platformer. So that was my notes from it. However, the big thing about Dreams is that it's like Construct, it's like 3DS Max, and it's like audio all at once. It's just, you can make your own games. And I really like this idea. As someone who's in a game design class, that's just really good. I can now use that to make my games rather than using all of them free programs. I just make it there and it looks really good. We saw a demo of it and I just, I couldn't believe it. It's really good. Uh, yeah, I think that's it from what I remember from EGX. Other than Dreams, I'm gonna put in a clip of Dreams now. Not on the green screen. Uh, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe uh, on Instagram and Twitter, follow me at li3l6th and I hopefully see you guys in the next video. Bye!